Fairway West fans, it's me, Pete. This is it. This is the deck. This is the one I am taking to the Grand Clash, and it is Sepulchral God. Uh, I love my Skaven, but I don't think I can really get to grips with them in time. So I've decided to stick with the old guard, literally the dead guard, and I'm going to be taking my Skelly Boys to the Grand Clash. Uh, before I go through this deck, I would like to say a little thank you to Matthew, John, and Simon. Uh, sounded like the Apostles there, but um. Thank you guys, you gave uh, some advice on the deck that I was building and I have taken a lot of your suggestions on board. So hopefully you approve of the final setup, let me know what you think. So anyway, here we go, I'm going to start with the objectives and the objectives are split into three piles. The first pile is one that I can hopefully score immediately or very quickly uh, during a turn, which obviously helps you cycle through your deck and gives you some of that mid-turn glory that's always useful. First one is Victorious Jewel, score immediately if my leader takes the enemy leader out of action. That will probably be a near end game scenario, but that will be handy because it's two glory. Next one is Crushing Force. You score one glory if you do twice as much damage as is needed to take someone out. So hopefully I'd either get the Warden with his three damage base boosted up uh, with some of my upgrades or maybe the Champion. And then I'd go after a weaker Skelly Boy or a Skaven or Arnold or Targor maybe on the opposition side. Or just try and get somebody nice and wounded first and then go in. Next one is No Remorse. Another score immediately. And this one you get if your attack characteristic or your attack has a damage characteristic greater than the target's wound characteristic. So it doesn't matter if they're wounded or not in this case. So it would be someone like my champion or my warden boosted up looking to do that one. And skills unforgotten. Score immediately again. If my leader takes an enemy fighter, doesn't matter who. Could be anyone. A nice weak target preferably. Out of action. And then the mid deck, this deck is hopefully a load of glory that I can score whether things are really going my way or not. So they'll give me hopefully a steady stream of glory, even if things are going a bit peak tong. First one is Supremacy. I've got three objectives in my half. I will be looking to go for that. But the earlier I can get it, the better. Next one is Ploy Master. All you've got to do is play three or more ploys. And as long as I'm lucky enough to pick up three or I can draw a third one, that will be mine. Next one is Battle Without End. I can score this if two or more of my friendly fighters return to the battlefield. Well, if I'm doing really badly, I'll have loads of guys to bring back, so that'll be a plus. March of the Dead. I'd like to get this more early game if I can, because you've got to move all your guys. Obviously, the downside of that is if you have get it in the first turn, you've got to move seven people. So that literally uses up your entire first phase trying to score that. But hopefully, if you can get that along with Supremacy, then that gives you a little bit of a boost there. So that would be five glory. And Escalation. This is a, a favourite card of mine and Robin's. I think Robin has it in his deck as well. And you get it if you get three upgrades played in the preceding action phase. Now, as it is in the whole preceding action phase, that means you can score it, hopefully, if your opponent plays a load of upgrades as well. So that's always worth having. And then the last ones are these are if things are going my way or everything's going to plan, these will hopefully help score me a few more glory. First one is Master of War. You score this if you score an objective card, play a ploy, and play an upgrade. Well, hopefully, boys and upgrades will be plentiful, and I'll score some of my instant score cards as well. Next one is Determined Defender. I can just stick one of my petitioners on a objective and then forget about them, and that's another glory for me. It does need two turns, though, so if I don't get that by the second turn, I cannot score it. And the last one is More Able Bodies. Hopefully, once I start to get a bit more offensive, I will be able to start killing people off left, right, and centre, and I will then be able to score more able bodies because you get it if you take out two or more enemy fighters. I wasn't sure whether to take more able bodies or I think it's Butchery, the one that means take three people out, but I thought that was pushing my luck a bit. More able bodies will be one I'll look to score when I'm up against Skaven or when I'm coming up against Corn or Fellow Undead. So those are my objectives, and once I score that lovely glory, I will be taking the following upgrades, hopefully. Now some real left fielders here, some I've never even used before, but Robin and I played a few games off camera, and some of them, on revisiting, and after suggestions from Matthew, John, and Simon, I have decided to throw them in my hand. So the first one is Light Armour. Once you put this on somebody, rolls of crits on a defence dice are no longer successes, which is a bad thing, but then I only roll dodges anyway, so it's not like I'm tanking it up. Uh, but you then do roll an extra attack dice when they make an attack. If I'm up against Corner Support Guard or Skaven, I'm going to put that on the Harvester because then he'll be rolling four dice once he's inspired. That's going to be pretty tasty and he can hit everyone around him. So hopefully he'll get really in the mix and get in everyone's faces. I'd also possibly play that on the Champion if I was up against Stormcaster Oryx because that extra dice will really help. And obviously the Warden is always an option. 
Next one's Demonic Weapon. It does two hammers and three damage to the opposition and you take a damage when you use it. I'd put that on a petitioner. I'd use it. They'd probably then get whack a mold and then I'd raise them and hopefully do it again. It does make them a, another target that the opponent's going to have to think about when they're doing their turns. Next one's Acrobatic. I like this one because it gives you an extra defense dice if you roll dodge. All of my guys roll dodge. That would almost definitely go on the warden, but possibly maybe the champion or the harvester, depending on how things are going. Shade Glass Darts. This is, I think, a great card for Sepulchral Guard because they move so slowly and the range of three gives them that much needed threat. I can put this on a petitioner, make them a viable target that my opponent's going to have to decide what they want to do with. Maybe sit them mid to backfield. Or if my opponent's going for objectives, I can then move them forward a bit and start sniping people off. Great strength, plus one damage to all attacks. That's a given. I'll give that to either my champion or my warden. Or again, I might give it to the harvester if I'm up against a more multitudinous force. Awakened weapon. You can reroll one attack dice every time they make an attack. Now, this one paired with light armor could be quite nasty on the champion or warden, but also if I'm up against a weaker foe, the harvester. He can hit everybody with four dice and reroll one. That's going to give him quite an edge. Next one's Undying, plus one wound. Probably go on the Warden, possibly the Champion, maybe the Harvester, depending on who I'm up against and how they're doing. I know the Prince isn't getting a lot of love here, but it's just I've never been a massive fan of the Prince of Dust. Frightening Speed, plus two move. Harvester, Champion, or Prince only, this one. Now, whilst I probably won't use the Prince of Dust for a lot of things, one thing he would be useful for would be uh, running into my opponent's half near the end of the game to hopefully stop them from scoring things like contain. And that would help me get the mobility I would need to do so. Next one is focused attack. Gives my harvester a new type of attack. Two hammers, two damage. If you roll a crit, it gets cleave. That combined with light armor to give him an extra attack dice could make him pretty nice. And it gives me another person with cleave up against people like Oryx. Um, dwarves or stormcast and the last one is deathly charge goes on the champion gets plus one damage if he makes charge action in that phase and if i can get a, a ploy that helps him attack again after he's charged then his second attack will also get the plus one damage because it says this fight's attack action with a range of one or two have plus one damage in a phase which they made a charge action so their attack actions with a range of one or two so once they've done it once they get it every time so those are my objectives and my upgrades. These are the cards I'm going to hopefully be using during the game to help me score those. First card is Death Throws. This one's a pretty big left fielder. I've not had this one in my deck before. I've had a similar card, but I haven't had this one. Um, you play this when an attack takes a friendly fighter out of action, and that's going to happen a lot for me. I can choose an enemy fighter adjacent to the target, and they suffer one damage. It doesn't even have to be the one that attacked them, just an adjacent one. Next one, Spores of Battle. Play this play an upgrade card and it doesn't cost a glory that's going to be a great one if i'm early game and i'm being choked for glory next one is sidestep the ability to move one of my guys one hex is always handy if i've got my warden hang back a little bit trying to keep him out of the thick of it but then i want to jump in forwards and stab at somebody that'll be useful and the next card's ready for action i do like this card i took it out at one point i've put it back in now uh, i can play this after i upgrade a fighter they can make a move or attack action if I could charge with the champion with Deathly Charge on to get his plus one damage attack, put an upgrade on him, maybe something like Light Armor to give him an extra attack dice, and then play ready for action, I could get two attacks out of him in a row. That would be enough to pretty much take nearly anybody out. Next one is Jewel of Wits. Help me cycle through my deck more, pick up more cards. Ceaseless Attack. Now I can play this after a friendly fire makes an attack. I can then make an attack with another friendly fighter. So again, if I can get my champion into position, and then the next turn attack with someone else, I could then attack again with the champion using this card. Or maybe if I've got the harvester in position, or I could use sidestep and push him into a better position to hit more people, again, I could use ceaseless attack to get that extra attack off. Next card I've got is Bone Shrapnel. Now this one's a bit like Death Throws. Uh, the difference here is you play the after attack takes friendly fire out, and the fighter that took them out suffers one damage. But that pretty much is two damage there. People can't stop either of those. Next one is Restless Dead. I can play this and I can bring somebody back. They start, they come back in spite, obviously, just like when the uh, Warden has them. And that will help me for Battle Without End, where I have to raise two people. After that, I've got the Necromancer Commands. I can play this after a friendly fighter's attack fails. I can make the attack again. If I'm in a position where I really, really, really want my Warden's attack to come off, maybe to get skills forgotten, or maybe my champion's going to bounce to lop somebody's head off and I really want to make that attack and it fluffs, 
which I so often do, then this will give me the ability to hopefully have another stab at it, literally. And the last card in my deck is Earthquake. Now, I know a load of people online are going about this is the new must-have card in the deck. And if you're an objective-based player, you've got to have it. And I'm not playing objectives, but I am taking it anyway. And I'm taking it solely to go up against people who are playing objectives. If I see somebody's grabbed three or four objectives on the table, and I've got this, it is getting played. And, you know, apologies, guys, if, um, you know, I do it against you and you sit there fuming for five minutes. It happened to me the other day when I was playing Robin. Uh, but in one of the games, I played it on Robin, pushed him off, and then he immediately played it again to push them all back. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, it's not always the worst thing in the world. And it probably won't come up often. I will almost definitely use Earthquake more to try and shunt, maybe if I'm up against Oryx or Offensive Corn, back a little bit, and then hopefully retreat away to give myself a little bit more time. So that is my deck. They're already all sleeved up. There's 20 ploys and upgrades there. And there are my 12 objectives. Now, as they're all sleeved, that means there is no changing. I've decided, I'm finished, I'm done, I'm not looking at any more. I'm going to try and not think about it too much, other than I'm going to keep looking at the list studiously over and over and over and over and over and over again to make sure I can try and actually remember what I've picked, because I still am pretty bad at that, and I probably should go and see somebody about that. My memory is absolutely shocking. But my deck is pretty simple. I'm going to use cards like the Necromance Commands to try and maximise my attack potential, along with things like Light Armour to give me more dice, Awakened Weapon to allow me to re-roll those attacks. I'm going to be taking Demonic Weapons to try and make one of my petitioners a bit more juicy as a, a fighter. I'm going to give Deathly Charge my champion to make him more stabby. I'm going to use cards like Restless Dead and Ready for Action to give me more attacks so I can try and do old 1-2 combat hit combos. And that's, that's it really. I mean, I'm just going to try and get some early glory, if I can, with cards such as maybe March of the Dead, maybe Ploy Master, hopefully Supremacy. That would give me four, maybe five glory early in the game if I'm lucky. I can get some of those upgrades out. I can then start chopping people up. That's the plan. It will probably all go to pot once the game starts, as nearly is always the case for me. But there we are. As I said we will be playing hopefully as you're listening to this so fingers crossed i am not losing too badly already and things are going my way but we will update you after the tournament is finished let you know how the decks did and how things go we will try and update you as we go uh, we'll try simon we will try but it's going to be a busy old day and you know we get easily flustered at the best of times so whether we get a chance to do anything or not i don't know we'll have to see how it goes Anyway, that's my deck. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll let you know how we did when we get back. Bye!